The debate among fans about who the strongest villain from the original 13 Dragon Ball Z theatrical movies are is one that may never end. Some believe it's Herudagarn, others think it's Broly, and there's good reasons to believe these things. For me, the most impressive villain as far as what he was able to accomplish and the power that he showed is the demonic entity Janimba from Dragon Ball Z Movie 12, The Revival of Fusion, Goku and Vegeta, or as it's known in the United States, Fusion Reborn. So on this video, this special edition of The Strongest in Dragon Ball, we're going to go back to the Dragon Ball Z days. We're going to, just for a moment, not talk about the Dragon Ball Renaissance, GT Super, or the recent movies, and just discuss the original 13 movies and talk about the frightening power of Janimba. Don't forget to check out the official Geekdom 101 store where you can support this channel as well as World of Geekdom with tons of different designs, sizes, and colors for you and your loved ones of Geekdom 101 merchandise, different shirts from throughout the years including the brand new empowerment shirt just for you. Check it out. I'll leave a link down below to the official Geekdom 101 store and thank you for almost four years of support. It means a lot to me. Now, if you don't think Janemba is the strongest movie villain, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. I want to discuss why I think so and the elements that make him very, very unique and the reason as to why I thought he was such a compelling character despite him being a little bit one-dimensional. The thing about Janemba and his power and his feats is that Janemba is essentially the pure personification of evil. And what ended up happening was, if you remember what happened in the film, the ogre that was watching the soul cleansing machine, the Oni, the machine malfunctioned when he was goofing off and all of the evil that's ever been contained, presumably since the beginning of time, within the soul cleansing machine, it malfunctioned and it became, it, it sort of infested into the ogre and physically became the pure personification of evil that was Janemba. Now, one of the things that Janemba did immediately upon his birth in the film is something that we've never seen before in Dragon Ball, and we haven't even seen it since, not only in the main series, but also the spin-offs, the games, and whatnot. Janemba had the ability to literally shatter the grid, literally crack the foundation between the world of the living and the world of the dead within the entirety of Universe 7. And I think people really underestimate just how incredibly absurd this feat is. Let's take a look at the diagram that was drawn for the Daizenshus of Universe 7. Now, I did an entire video a little while ago where I went into explicit detail on the realms of Dragon Ball. So I do suggest watching that video after you get done with this one to get a better understanding of the universe that Toriyama created. But anyways, the universe is shaped spherically, sort of like a globe, like a planet, except it's much, much, much bigger, obviously. And you have the realm of the living. You have the realm of the afterlife. You've got the Kaioshin realm orbiting around it. And of course, you've got the demon realm down below. And again, I've done videos on the demon realm and things like that you know, on the channel. Now, what you have to understand first and foremost is that the universe of Dragon Ball is not only a macrocosm in the world of the mortals, but an even larger macrocosm in the world of the afterlife. Because remember, the afterlife has to be big enough to contain anybody who has ever died in the history of time itself. And that's quite a lot of people because the universe is very old. And I'm talking about both heaven and hell. So because of that, the ability that Janimba had to not only shut down King Yemma, shut down down essentially all of the gods and take over the afterlife and break the seal between the living and the dead is a feat that's like no other we've seen in Dragon Ball. I mean, you watch the film and you see people coming back to life when Janimba takes control. There's people from the dead that are rising from the dead. It's almost like something out of Revelations from the Bible. It's just a crazy end time situation, a catastrophe, if you will. Villains, innocent people, all coming back to life. Janimba was so powerful that he was able to break the rules of the living and the dead world and shut out King Yemma, who might not be as physically powerful as some of the higher gods like Beerus and Whis, but 
he has a very important role to play in the cosmos of Dragon Ball, and he was completely powerless against Janemba. Now, the one feat that does get brought up when it comes to power in regards to Janemba in this movie is the fact that Super Saiyan Goku is transforming into Super Saiyan 3 in the movie, which is an epic transformation, of course, even if you're watching it dubbed or subbed, you know, they're just screaming like crazy, and it feels like the entire afterlife was shaking, because people could feel Goku's power even across the afterlife and you have to remember keep this in mind the universe is composed of four quadrants with four galaxies that's how it is in the mortal realm the afterlife is even bigger because of the fact that there's so many people that are dead so it's presumably a lot larger and thus it's more impressive to kind of understand this and even then Super Saiyan 3 Goku did defeat Janemba in his first form, but once Janemba transformed into his final form, which is called Super Janemba by the fandom, at that point, Super Janemba just had his way with Super Saiyan 3 Goku. So Janemba's fighting SS3 Goku, who he says in the movie already fought Majin Buu. Obviously, the movies do not go with the main storyline or the manga, so you really can't compare movie Goku to anime Goku, but if you do, you at least know that this movie Goku fought Boo at some point. I mean, again, these movies don't fit with the storyline, but the fact that Janemba had his way with SS3 Goku and Majin Buu didn't. In fact, Goku thought he could beat Majin Buu in SS3 if he went full power. Janemba mopped the floor with Goku and with Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta in the afterlife. He's just ridiculously powerful. Now, one thing a lot of people have brought up with regards to Janemba is the fact that Gogeta, with the Soul Punisher technique, purified Janemba, turning him back into the Oni, didn't actually defeat Janemba, and thus a lot of fans believe that because of that, Janemba could not actually be destroyed. I've seen some people theorize that Gogeta had to do that because you can't destroy Janemba. He's too strong. They just had to convert him back into being good. Unfortunately, there's no actual evidence to support this. Plus, if you actually watch the short fight between Gogeta and Janemba, Gogeta absolutely wrecked Janemba. There was nothing Janemba could do at all to even make Gogeta break a sweat. I mean, it was just a joke of a fight. It was so one-sided, it's ridiculous. But earlier in the film, we see Janemba's reality warping abilities, not just with the fact that he can actually dematerialize and rematerialize during fights, which is something we've never seen before until we saw Beerus do it in the Battle of Gods film way later. You know, Janemba can do that. He can also create weapons out of nothing. He can literally pick up that rock and turn it into a sword. He has reality warping powers and has the ability to warp all of the afterlife, which is absolutely nuts. I mean, Janemba did create those wacky balls and all these different things in the afterlife. So, he is very, very, very powerful, and that's why I think he's the strongest Dragon Ball Z original 13 movie villain. Now, you could make an argument for Herudegarn. I don't believe Herudegarn has that kind of ability. Of course, Broly, um, very, very powerful as well. The one thing that I think might be going against Janemba, now what I'm about to talk about is purely theoretical. It's not actually explained in the series, is that many believe that Janemba's power can only thrive in the afterlife. In other words, if Janemba were to cross over into the realm of the living, he would not be as powerful. Unfortunately, like I said, there's no evidence to support this. I know there's been debates, and this has been used in debates to try to depower Janemba, but there's just nothing to prove any of this at all. The movie takes place in the afterlife. There is a limited runtime of the movie, which is why Gogeta was able to win so quickly because all the Dragon Ball Z movies have this quick finish. That's just how they are. So it's one of those things where it's never been proven that Janemba's power exists only in hell or in the afterlife. Obviously, it seems like if he can control matter and things like that I don't see there being an actual reason that he couldn't do that in the world of the living now case in point if you want to bring up other sources that have used Janemba like some of the video games Dragon Ball Z Shin Budokai of course you've got Dragon Ball Heroes which brought Janemba back but not just that Janemba also got upgrades in Dragon Ball Heroes like Baby Janemba and Destruction King Janemba which I've already covered in another video which I will link to at the end of this one there are examples of Janemba appearing in the mortal realm and still being as strong. So that, 
Again, we're talking video games here, so it doesn't really match up with the main story of the movie, but there's, again, there's more evidence to support that Janimba's power exists in all realms versus just the afterlife. Plus, let's not forget that at one time, the official Toei website for the movies did list Super Janemba as being stronger than Harutagarn, mostly because of the fact that Janemba was able to tear apart SS3 Goku, whereas Harutagarn technically lost to SS3 Goku, even though it was the Dragon Fist, he still lost. So if we're going by official statements, based on what was packaged with the Dragon Ball Z movie DVDs that came out years ago in Japan, it lists Janemba as being the strongest movie villain, with Harutagarn being the second strongest. That's from the official sources. Obviously, Takao Koyama says that it's Broly, so there's always going to be a debate amongst Toei, Koyama, and the fandom, but to me... What Janemba accomplished in the movie was absolutely crazy, and that's why I think Janemba should be remembered as being incredibly powerful and a scary threat. Thank you so very much for watching this edition of The Strongest in Dragon Ball. Very special edition, throwing back to Dragon Ball Z. Of course, great times watching those old movies and episodes when we were all kids and teenagers, and hey, let's all have a blast watching them again. Thanks so much for watching, and if you like this topic and want to learn more about Janemba and the realms of Dragon Ball, check out these videos right now.